Through my practicum and teaching experiences in the classroom, I have able to develop and practice my own beliefs regarding teaching and learning. By having these beliefs and using them in my practice, they have greatly influenced my actions as a teacher inside and outside of the classroom. My beliefs of how teaching is to be done, how students learn, how the material should be taught, my relationships with my students and their families have all affected how instruction is done inside my classroom. My philosophy of education centers around making sure that conversation is present in the classroom, whether that be between my students and I, students' families and I, conversations among just the students, or most importantly, conversations with me and my peers around me. Those, through sharing my experiences and theories I have learned through the years, I will share why I believe keeping conversation present in my classroom is very important to me. The belief that I hold about my teaching and my students learn is that it's the teacher's responsibility to be a leader in the classroom and work alongside with the students and their families. One way that I ensure the students are working alongside with me and their learning is by making sure that they feel welcomed and participate in the conversations that are happening throughout the instruction in my classroom. During my time spent in the elementary classrooms these last three years, I have learned the importance of students feeling comfortable and respect in the classroom before learning can begin. Before I could have my students be comfortable in my classroom, however, I had to make sure I was comfortable in my classroom and with my teaching style. Standard 10 states that a teacher must be able to communicate and interact with parents or guardians, families, schools, colleagues, and the community that supports student learning and well-being. And Standard 10B communicates to state a teacher must understand how factors in students' environment outside of school including family circumstances, community environments, health and economic conditions may influence student life and learning. I, as a teacher, need to be comfortable and know how to interact with these resources as stated that will benefit me and my students in my classroom. I need to be comfortable and confident in the teaching to do so. I need to be confident to reach out to the peers, to talk with families, to meet up and set meetings and talk about students and learning inside the classroom to better my teaching. With my past years teaching alongside cooperating teachers, it was difficult not to compare my teaching styles to their teaching styles. This was unfair to me, however, because I was comparing my teaching style of a 20-year-old something single male in college to a middle-aged mother and wife who has been teaching for longer than I've been born. Because of our different backgrounds and personalities and experiences, of course our teaching styles are going to be different. So it would be unfair to compare, it would be like comparing apples to oranges. During my student teaching experience, I was able to become more conf comfortable and confident in my own teaching style. One thing that really helped was being able to observe the male teachers in the building, especially since I've never worked with a male teacher in my years attending the elementary education program at Morris. I got to see that my laid back, joking, but strict attitude and teaching style matched those of the male teachers. My supervisor, Jody, during the student teaching experience, she said it best when she said, the female teachers I've been observing, they have more of a mom style of teaching, which works. But myself and the male teachers have a dad style of teaching, which works just as well. There's no wrong way to teach. You know, there's an asterisk because there's extreme wrong ways to teach. But for the most part, if you have your teaching style and it works, it's not wrong. If students are learning, you're comfortable in your teaching, what, what's there to be done? By becoming more confident in my teaching style, I can become more comfortable in my classroom and be more personal and real with my students. As a teacher, it is my responsibility to ensure that all my students are feeling safe and secure in the classroom before learning can begin. This calls us me as a teacher to get to know my students outside of the curriculum. Morning greetings, morning meetings, and conversations outside of the curriculum helps ensure for me to get to know my students more personally. Getting to know my students also helps model to the students how they can get to know their classmates around them. In elementary classrooms, I've seen the importance of students learning how to interact with each other. Therefore, as a teacher, I make sure to incorporate as much conversation in the classroom. Not only does this method keep me from being the only one talking or sharing information, but allows the students to practice discussing with others around them, as well as sharing their own ideas and insight from the information being taught. Dewey, in his Learning by Doing theory, believes that learning occurs through experience, an experience I always try to provide for my classroom is conversation. One example from my own experience is when I was teaching a lesson where the students were learning how to make inferences and connections to their own beliefs that they were reading. So on the board, I had a picture of a girl blowing out 
her birthday candles, and the students were supposed to make the personal connection that it must be her birthday because they have blown out candles on a cake. One of the students shared that she has no boyfriends, and they know she has no boyfriends because they know when they blow out the candles and have no candles lit, their family jokes about how they don't have any boyfriends or girlfriends. This student's connection stuck way better with the class than the example I provided to the classroom. If I hadn't given the students the opportunity to share their example or their inference that they made, the students wouldn't have heard the connection that allowed them to understand the objective of the lesson. My role as a teacher is to provide a positive learning environment where the students not only learn about the curriculum, but they learn and can share the information with their peers. Reflecting back on my own education, this was very beneficial to me. In high school, my peers and I, we worked best when we worked through problem, each problem together. At least every other problem, we were arguing about who was wrong because our answers never matched. And I found this to be beneficial. When my friend and I argued about who had it wrong, I was learning from my mistakes when I found out that he had it right and I had it wrong and where my mistake happened. But I was also learning from my friend's mistakes, even if I had the answer right. I knew Ryan messed up in this part of the question, so I'm going to make sure I watch out for that part of the question for the test or when I do this in the future. This allows me to not learn from my own mistakes, but from others' mistakes, which I think is very beneficial and time-saving. Looking back at it, I collabed so much in high school and college in the real world. Why not have that opportunity to collab and learn about collabing in elementary so they're ready when they get older and are expected to do it more? I also believe students should be taught the material by applying new knowledge on top of current knowledge, as well as working with the material hands-on themselves. When learning new material, it is beneficial for the student to make meaningful connections to the material being taught. Berner, in his constructivist theory, believed that individuals learn best when they compare new ideas and concepts with their current knowledge. I apply this theory when teaching all subjects in the elementary classroom. This just doesn't include connecting a reading concept to another reading concept, or maybe a math concept to another math concept, even though that works and is very beneficial in the classroom, but by connecting two concepts from two different subjects taught in the classroom. For example, if there was a connection that could be made during a math lesson with a previous reading lesson, I made sure to inc include that connection in my, in my instruction. In my teaching, I remember connecting the capacity units we learned about in math to our science unit when we were making homemade ice cream. In the same science unit when we were making homemade ice cream, I was able to connect cause and effect, which we learned about in the previous lesson about the three states of matter, as well as what they were reading in the reading instruction, reading about finding cause and effect and what they were reading. By being aware of these connections, students are not only learning about the material, but seeing how the materials can be taught, can be applied to other subjects, as well as their everyday lives. The students not only needs to learn the connections that can be used with the material, but how they can interact with the material being taught in the classroom. Doing is learning by doing theory believes that learning occurs through experience. Therefore, I make sure to have as much hands-on learning in the classroom as possible for students, especially with the use of manipulatives in the math curriculum. Looking back at my student teaching experience, before a student can learn how to visualize borrowing tens from the tens column when doing two double-digit subtraction, the student needs to see how it is done using connecting blocks. They can't visualize it up here until they've seen it in front of them out here. By having students working hands-on with the material being taught, they are learning through their own experiences and better able to remember the information being learned. They are better able to remember the information because they're not their minds involved in the experience, but their bodies and senses as well. The relationships of students and teachers that I strive to have present in my classroom is one where both the student and the teacher learn from each other. As a teacher, I am the leader in the conversation present in the classroom. My goal by providing conversation is that students learn how to communicate with one another and learn and teach from each other. In his book, Pedagogy of Hope, Paulo Fier discusses how an educator should be aware that they can learn from the student and the student can and should gain knowledge outside of the classroom. Fier then continues to share that the student needs to be aware that they have their own knowledge and information that they can share with the teacher and those around them. When criticizing and discussing the bank model of education, Fear argues that students' brains are not just empty belts waiting to be filled by the teacher. Students learn from not only their teachers, but from their families, peers, 
and the world around them, as stated in Standard 2 of Effective Teaching, which I'll talk about later. As mentioned earlier, I try to focus, hold a focus on conversations in the classroom to better allow students to obtain the material. Conversations in the classroom can also be used to have a better relationship of teamwork and community in the classroom, as well as outside of the classroom. As a teacher, my relationship with my students is being a leader and providing them opportunities and practice on engaging in conversation. I provide these opportunities to practice, including conversations and majority of my lessons throughout the school year. The school should interact with parents and families in consistent conversation and sharing. When students are not spending time with us in our classroom, they are spending time with their family members. How a student behaves in the classroom or what they share in the classroom could be different to how the student behaves at home. The teacher and family can communicate and share what is going great at home or great in the classroom, as well as what's not going so well at home and what's not so well in the classroom. In my experience, I learned students are more confident or they save face in the classroom. They don't want to embarrass themselves in front of their peers, so they break down at home or they act out at home. Being a teacher not at home, we don't know that behavior happens unless conversation happens with the family. By keeping the student's parents and family a part of the learning process, the student is better to achieve because they're getting more consistency in behavior corrections and words being used and phrases between schools and homes. For parents or family who struggle to have their students line up with the school, I believe time, their time line up with the school, I believe it's my responsibility to find a time that works best for the family. Communicating with families in the medium and consistency that works best for the family allows the family the same opportunity to receive information as other families in the classroom. Um, it's my personal belief, not just professionally, but personally, that there's always time to conversate or make room for someone to help them. Um, no matter how busy your schedule is, you can always fit in five, 10 minutes with them and discuss with it. When connecting to the standards, my philosophy on communication connects with three principles of effective teaching that really stood out to me. Standard 10, as stated earlier, which states a teacher must be able to communicate and interact with parents, guardians, families, school colleagues, and the community to support student learning and well-being. And standard 10B, which means by connecting, communicating with my peers, I serve as, well, by connecting and communicating with my peers, I serve as a role model for my own students on communicating. I can't expect my students to communicate and work together if I can't do so. Standard 2 states that a teacher must understand how students learn and develop and must provide learning opportunities that support a student's intellectual, social, and personal development. And then Standard 5, Effective Teaching Practice, states that a teacher must be able to use an understanding of an individual and group motivation and behavior to create learning environments that encourage positive social interaction, active engagement in learning, and self-motivation. By having communication, students are learning from each other while they are also learning how to work together. They are learning that they have their own strengths and weaknesses to bring to the table. They have their own ideas to share, but they also have, there are ideas that they need to hear from others. They, they bring value to a team, but most importantly, they know that others are bringing value to them as well. Communication helps students learn more and better themselves intellectually, but most importantly, they're learning about the values in others and what they have to bring to the table, and therefore bettering themselves for society. They're bettering themselves and their knowledge, but they're bettering themselves by understanding how they work together, a stronger unit. By reflecting on my time spent in the classroom, I have developed and practiced my own beliefs regarding teaching and learning. My beliefs of teaching is to be done, how students learn, how the material should be taught. My relationships with my students and their families have all infected how instruction is done in my classroom. By having these beliefs and using them in practice, they have greatly influenced my actions as a teacher inside the classroom. And that is why conversation is such a centerpiece in my teaching.